Good morning, good morning. Hey guys, it's Harold Leland Jr., the internet guy from Investment Group Partners. It's Motivational Monday morning. Get up, get out, and be ready. Guys, listen, it's day 23. 23 days into the new year. 23 days into the new year. What have you done constructive? What have you done to establish, manage, uh, maintain the framework of your family's financial future. Guys, I need you really to hear me. We're 23 days into the new year. We're in the first quarter of the year, one of the most successful quarters we have have been experiencing as a community investment club. I want to say good morning to your families, good morning to your friends. Guys, but you've got to understand that this is imperative for our financial future. Listen, we're called from Proverbs 13, 22, a good man, a righteous man, an honorable man leaves an inheritance for their children's children. My job as a minister of finance to teach you how to establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future. But it takes principles. It takes biblical principles. There are things that you have to do every day, all day, without fail, no exceptions. You have to apply these principles to your everyday living. You have to be able to do what thus saith the Lord in order to achieve what God has for you. You have to be ready for that. And this is what the Bible reveals to us every single day. The problem we have is that we eliminate the Lord from certain aspects of our life as if he does not need to be there. We eliminate him from the bedroom. We eliminate him from our finances. We eliminate him uh, when we're around our friends that are not saved. What's going on? Guys, listen, we have to constantly be moving. We serve a moving God. It's constantly be moving. But that moving, that direction has to be towards God. Hey, guys, we're in day 23 of Christian financial wellness. Today's word is moving towards God. It is moving in God's direction. It is moving in God's direction. And that is a, a key principle in obtaining generational wealth. Here's a key principle that you have to do concerning everything else that God has revealed to us. Whether you use it step by step, whether you've been recording the information, today's word is a rhema word. That word is to be used for today. We can't focus on yesterday. It's already gone. We can't focus on tomorrow. It has not arrived. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, his kingdom, and then all these things will be added unto you. We have to follow the rules and the guidelines that are laid out for us every day. I know that sometimes we think about these situations. We say, oh, I'm overwhelmed. Don't get overwhelmed. This is when scripture tells you, watch, don't be weary in your well-doing. If you know you're doing right, you know you're in the right position, you know you're studying, you're reading, you're praying, you're, you're putting your hands on your family, whether it's physically or spiritually, don't be weary of your well-doing. Because sometimes what the world will do is overwhelm you with information, overwhelm you with stress, it be trying to move you out of a position of purpose that God has placed you in. Each position that you're in, serves a purpose. The position is good, but the purpose outweighs the position. It's like, for instance, I'm in a position of purpose as a husband. I have to maintain that position. I have to do what God says as a husband. But the purpose <laughs> is greater than the position. I'm in a position as a father. I'm in a position as a teacher. I'm in a position as a, as a fiduciary. That's what I do. I help trade stocks. I help make us money every day in the markets. So it's imperative that we maintain our positions. The positions are important, but the purpose of the position will always outweigh the position. This is why we have to constantly move. You have to constantly be moving. But how do you do this? You've got to first do what God says concerning a strategy on what we do. Every day. Number one, here's the strategy. Seek ye first, Matthew 6, 33. Always start there. Always start there. If you don't know what to do in the morning when you wake up, grab your word and start there. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Then go to verse 34. Take no need for tomorrow because tomorrow can take care of itself. There's enough evil in today. We have to be able to deal with the right now of today. We always talk about life happens. I tell you, hashtag life happens. But the secret to life happens is you managing the happenings in your life as they're happening to you. 
And this is part of being financial aware of what's going on. You want to get to the end result expectations that are called from Scripture. Scripture says you're the head, not the tail. Scripture says that you're the lender and not the borrower. Scripture says that you're supposed to leave an inheritance for your children's children. And that inheritance is just not monetary. It's just not. It also includes education. Are you educating your kids on how to save money? Are you educating your kids on how to invest money? Are you educating your kids on how money operates and what the world needs in for it to operate? We're here for a season. God says that we're sojourners and we're only passing through. But while we're passing through, we're supposed to be an example for the world to see the possibilities that God has in his people. But we're starting to look like the world. We're supposed to be different from the world. We're supposed to be odd people. Peculiar people. Scripture says we're supposed to be peculiar. The other day, I, I, I rejoiced in God when a guy says, you're a peculiar fella. <laughs> and I say, hallelujah. <laughs> that means that I'm in the right position with God. Guys, listen, if you hear me out today, this is day 23 of Christian Financial Wellness. Day 23 exercising our money. It's another motivational Monday morning. My name is Harold Dillon Jr., the internet guy from Investment Group Partners. We're the parent association for Community Investment Club. If you're watching me live right now, you're already a member of the club. If you're listening to me later in the day, you want to join the club. You want to go to Facebook. You want to look up Community Investment Club. Put in your in the left top right hand corner of your, of your internet type in community investment club and join the club what we do is our goal is to teach one reach one and bring one along so my goal is to help you establish manage and maintain the framework of your family's financial future regardless is my hat straight <laughs> regardless of what's going on in the world around you in society in your community in your church in your neighborhood in your house it is somebody's job yours to establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future, you've got to be able to put your family in a place to where you don't have to suffer from poverty. Your thinking cannot be poverty level. You have to be on a different level. And my God, job is to get you on that level. Listen, there's two places I know you can be. You can be on the mountaintop or you could be in the valley. There's no in-between. If you're on the mountaintop, and I'm in the valley and you're talking to me, any information you give me is going to be distorted because you got to yell down. Any information I give you is going to be distorted because I got to yell up. So we need to be in the same place. Let's get in the place of position, position of purpose. We have to be on one accord. This is what the Bible tells us. In order for us to better understand first what God is saying, we need to be in a position with God. So position of purpose, down back to that thing, when a position of purpose, even when we're trading stocks, like we chose the stock market as a platform, as a platform to do what? Apply the principles of God concerning stewardship. I don't care where you decide to apply the principles of God concerning stewardship. As long as you believe and know that the end result expectation is to achieve the wealth that is stored up by the wicked. That's stored up for us. That that wealth is stored up. How do we get that wealth? You can't go knock on the Mr. Wicked Man door. It is not reallocation of wealth. It is wealth getting what belongs to us. But God said, here's the principle. Here's the rules, the regulations, the guidelines. Here's how you're going to get to that end result. So we chose the platform called the stock market. Just so y'all understand. You could have chose Forex. Principles still apply. You could have chose cryptocurrency. Principles still apply. You could have chose to build a brick and mortar to be a lawyer, to be a teacher, a doctor, sell real estate. You could have chosen to sell t-shirts and to swap me. The principles still apply. He, a good man, a righteous man, an honorable man, a good woman, a righteous woman, an honorable woman, a good parent, an honorable parent, a righteous parent, leaves an inheritance for their children's children. And the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Do not let the world's ideologies stop you or confuse you on how we do business. You just can't. You can't. Now, remember, when you come to the lesson, you hear me out, guys, always bring a pen. Where's your pen? Go get your pen. Always bring your word. You need the word of God, because in order to apply the principles of God, you got to understand the principles of God and, and apply this into your life. This is this is a daily thing. And we're going to deal with today. So make sure you got your Bible. And the third thing you want to bring, you want to bring a, a, a word. So I got my pen. I got my word. I, and you want to bring a journal so you can write down those scriptures that I go through concerning stewardship. Guys, I know you're tired of having more month left than money. You got to be. A lot of you are spiritually broke. You're broken down and you're broken. And I found out that broken and hurt people break and hurt people. The person, we have to, we have to plan for this. 
And so God gives us a strategy. Same way I tell you we have a strategy on how we trade stocks. We have a strategy on how we choose stocks. We have a seven key indicators. We use seven key indicators. Why seven? God's perfect number. So when we're inside of, our, of our E-Trade, our full service brokerage account, we have seven key indicators derived from the Bible and we find out how to apply these indicators. So we, before we execute a trade, before we do anything, we seek out first God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, and 34. You have to apply that. You have to apply that in every aspect of your life, not just for finances. Uh, you want to do something, you and your wife want to go on vacation, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You guys want to have a child, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You have to be able to apply God's principles to every aspect of your life. We have to stop eliminating God from certain areas of our life that we think he doesn't belong. Y'all better talk to me. Anyway, go to your word. And I was going to go to your word. Why was we going to go to our word? Oh, Lord, I forgot. I'm live, guys. This is Harold Hill of Junior, the internet guy from Investment Group Partners. This is Opening Bell. We're in day 23 of Christian Financial Wellness. If you've never joined us before, we are the Parent Association for Community Investment Club. And listen, what do we do? We teach Christian financial wellness. We teach how to be better stewards of God. We teach you how to exercise your money. What are we doing? We're building we're building, we're establishing, we're managing, we're maintaining the framework of our family's financial future. This is what we do. We do this all day, every day, without fail, no exceptions. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was telling you, don't get caught up in the world's ideologies. Do not. Do not get caught up in the ideology. The world will try to tell you and convince you to do it this way. I don't listen to CNBC about investing. I don't listen to Bloomberg and Wall Street Journal. All that's just information. I need to find out what the world's go doing where they're moving and how they're operating. So you, I keep that on so I can hear them while I'm hearing the Lord. Y'all better talk to me. Bible tells me and watch this and you're, you're applying this to your life. I have to be as wise as the serpent, <laughs> but as harmless as a dove. Y'all better talk to me. As wise as the serpent, but as harmless as a dove. Are you applying that to your life? Guys, we're 30 minutes before uh, the market's open. We just see Jim Cramer and his cronies. I call him Crazy Jim Cramer. Just entered the market. You can see behind me the futures are about to turn green. God has been blessing us these 23 days. Uh, 22 days. We're in day 23. We're blessed on 23 days. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 23 days he's been blessing us financially. Our portfolio has been gaining equity. Any losses we incurred in the third quarter of 2022, uh, any losses we incurred in the second quarter of 2022 have all been regained. So now in the next days, we're going to be rebounding and in, and in adding to the equity of our portfolio. If you have not already got started with group portfolio club investing, shame on you. Shame on you. Now, remember, there's three levels of membership that you can get into. You can be a self-investing member. A self-investing member does this thing on their own. They follow our trades. They have their own brokerage account. All those good things. That's a great thing to have. And then they have the learn as you earn member. A learn as you earn member gets into our training program, follows our videos, watches us on YouTube. They decide to go step by step by step by step on how to navigate through my brokerage account, how to choose a stock before I buy it, how to know when to, when to trade and when to sell. We give you seven key indicators. Then there are principles inside of our strategies based on the Bible on when we sell. And then we have active investing members. Our most, our most, our our, our most popular, I was going to say profitable, but it is profitable. Our most popular membership is active investing members. Those are members we pull our funds together. We use group portfolio club investing and we get a greater return. In group portfolio club investing, it eliminates in the risk that an individual would have trying to do this on their own. That's why we do it together. We learn together, we earn together, we grow together. This allows us to have a greater return with lowering the risk. Because one person, you can buy a share of Tesla, and I'll see what Tesla's trading at. Let me go into my computer. Got to put my glasses on for this one. And we're going to get back to that scripture. I'm going to Colossians 2 and 8. But I'm going in to look at Tesla right now, guys. We're inside the market. We have about 30 minutes before the market is open. This is pre-market trading. This is opening bell with Harold Elam Jr., the Internet guy. We call this Motivation on Monday morning. Get up, get out, and be ready. It is Motivation on Monday morning. I need you to be ready. But most importantly, I need you to understand. The Bible teaches us in all of thy getting, get an understanding. 
So an individual, and we're talking about group portfolio club investing, this is where we pull our funds together and we create a, a platform of greater buying power. This buying power allows us to do more as a group than we could as an individual. So an individual might want to buy Tesla. Tesla's trading right now at 135.87 a share. That's a great price because Tesla normally trades at 800 to 1200 dollars a share. But they did a stock split back in August of 2022, making the stock affordable for everybody to buy. We began to buy the stock in August of 2022. We call it the Tesla effect. Our goal is to get to 160 shares of Tesla because Tesla can exercise what they call a multi-billion dollar buyback. So when they did a stock split, it, it increased the number of shares that's in the market. And so now they made it affordable for everybody. So now they're going to eliminate that increase they flooded the market with when they buy the shares back. That's going to cause um, the, de the demand to go up, but the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, supply to go down. So when the supply is low, demand go up, prices go up. It's the same thing. So Tesla did their stock split in August. The stock's trading at a dollar, um, excuse me, $135.85 in pre-market trading right now. So an individual can buy this Tesla stock. They can buy 10 shares. And I'm going to show you the importance in the um, of group portfolio club investing. Hopefully you guys can hear me. And because I look away, I'm looking at my screen. You can see in the background that we do use multiple screens, but the TV behind me, that TV screen is CNBC. We really watch the ticker tape and the information on the individual stocks because that's what we do is we invest in individual stocks. So we collaborate communicate together as a team. We have seven different neighborhood managed group portfolios. We have a collaboration team of 11 people. They're supposed to be 12, so I'm waiting for God to send the 12th person. And what I don't see, they see. What I don't hear, they hear. And we share this information before we execute trades. And this is how we maintain our positions with God. Iron sharpens iron. Every part of the Bible that God reveals to you that you know, understand, and can utilize, you're supposed to use it every aspect of your life, every day, all day, without fail, no exceptions. None. So anyway, so the individual can buy 10 shares of Tesla. This is the individual investor. If you decided to do this on your own, and you can, because we have what they call self-investing members. But if you, if you bought 10 shares of Tesla at the current price, I'm waiting for my computer to update, guys, and I do apologize about technical difficulties. It would cost you $1,334.20. That's 10 shares. But when you get into it, that would cost you $1,300, putting at risk that much of your family's finances. But as an, when you get into group portfolio club investing, you can invest half of that or a fraction of that. When we have seven different neighborhood managed group portfolios, the minimum member contribution to get started is $10. That's what our penny stock member portfolio, or you can get into a value portfolio, $25 is the minimum. The maximum, I believe, is $1,000, and there's an unlimited amount in the Family First Savings Fund portfolio. But you can get started with $10, not $1,300. We always encourage people to get started with $100, because $100 can put you into four funds, four portfolios. And if you have four portfolios, you've already diversified your investment. So, Because as a group, we don't purchase 10 shares. We purchase 100 shares because we have greater buying power. So where you spend 1300 we spend 13000 And then the return on that is greater. It is greater because as an individual, each of us get to eat because we collectively come together. So let's say we're just dealing with this one stock, and I'm giving you an example of how group portfolio club investing works. Tesla, we buy those 100 shares, and out of those 100 shares, you invested $100. Well, you're part of that group. Y'all better talk to me. And let's say the stock does exactly what we expect it to do. Elon decides this quarter, like he's planning on doing, he buys back his stock. And the stock goes back to its $800 price. That's the minimum. So that means now our $13,000 investment we made as a group is worth $80,000. I want y'all to follow me. $80,000. Well, let's look that up. I want to see the percentages. And I want to give you real numbers so you can best understand this because we just purchased that kind of 100 what is that 100 shares it costs us $13,000 hold on one second we'll get to this calculator 
And I should have had all this up because I wanted to go over this. But the Lord said, always do the lesson first. And the lesson today, guys, if you did not know, while I'm waiting for my computer to load, I have this calculated. It gives me percentages. Where is it at? There it is. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Harold Hill, guys. And this is what I'm looking at. A couple of key stocks also this morning so you guys know. Um, I have a list. This is what we're holding. These are what we call our money stocks. Uh, LYT is one of our money stocks. Um, LYT is a penny stock. It's trading at $1.26. We're going to check the pre-market trading on that particular stock. LYT, i got to give information out to our self-investing members. Um, so look that one up. GNS, we've been in GNS twice. We got out on Friday. We made about $9,000 on that particular trade. GNS, God, Nicodemus, Solomon, GNS. It is a great stock. When last time I checked, it was at $3.78. That 52-week high is $36.75. Um, hold on, let, let's get back to our, our Tesla example. All right? So, um, Starting value, my computer's just moving slow, guys, so y'all have to bear with me this morning. All right, so starting value is 13000 um, We're going to just say 13000 And we're going to go, and the ending value, because we're going to say the stock went right back up to its original, and that's only on 100 shares, $800. And I hate when my computer moves slow. That's why I started using my phone, so that way you can see me, hear me, understand me, and I can use the computer without looking too far away from you. Um, I just want to see the, the advantage increase. I can show you what you would earn just invest in $100. Even though you're participating, because we're on 160 shares of Tesla. So our group portfolio, uh, when we started the Tesla effect back in August, was to get to 160 shares. Because we didn't just buy Tesla. We In, in, in August, Tesla did the split. In July, um, Google did the split. And then in June, Amazon did the split. So Amazon, June, we did the Amazon effect. It made it affordable. Amazon stock was trading over $2,300. In July, Google did a split, making that stock affordable. And we got over 160 shares during the course of the year or the remainder of the year. And the same way with Tesla. So the three of the biggest, three of the five of the biggest tech stocks that are out there decided to do stock split. Never did that before. So we knew God was working in our favor, made it affordable, gave us an opportunity to buy more. So into the new quarter, which we're in now, we're in the first quarter of the, of the new year, 2023. We're 23 days into this, and we're looking for this quarter to be successful. We're looking for the first quarter, Tesla to do a buyback. Second quarter, Google and Amazon to do their buyback. Turning those deals that we did when they did their stock split into a half a million dollar deal. That's $500,000 of additional income added to the seven portfolios that we are already trade. So this is how we earn our living, guys. This is how we do this. This is for the future, not for us. Even though we do this in the immediate, the right now space, the Bible teaches us in Proverbs 13, 22, a good man, a righteous man, an honorable man leaves an inheritance for their children's children. That means it's not for us. We can enjoy some of the fruits of our labor, but we're not blessed to bless us. We're blessed to bless others. So the percentage increase from 13,000 to 88,000, we're going to go there. Um, is 576%. 576%. So now I want to give you that. So that means that if you invested just $100, $100 based on the Tesla move, your $100 is now worth $676 because it's up 576%. And everybody eats off the same percentage increase. So even though that's what Group Portfolio Club Investing offers, it offers a greater return than an individual investor, the risk is almost eliminated and reduced. It is almost eliminated. The risk and the investment is lower. So you can buy 10 shares and spend $1,300, or you can buy help participate in buying 100 shares and spend $100. And your return Everybody eats from 576%. Just like when God is looking for a return. In Matthew 25 and 14, you got your Bible. Remember, everything we do is based on Scripture. Everything that we do is based on biblical guidelines that stewardship is revealed to us. We go to Matthew. Um, and I still got to get to Colossians. But we go to Matthew 25 and 14. 
It says again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags of gold, to another one bag of gold according to their ability. Everything that God gives us is based on our ability. So the only thing you're going to get back based on the percentage we do together is what you put in. So it goes on to say, then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went out and once put his money to work and gained five more bags. So based on his ability, he doubled his investment. The so also with the one with two bags of gold gained two more. So he had two bags of gold and he gained two more. So each of these persons immediately when they got blessed, when they were entrusted with something, went out and doubled their money. So here's what God is telling us. When I give you something, I'm expecting a return. When I bless you with something, I'm expecting a return. So we teach stewardship inside of everything that we do. We teach the principles of stewardship. So but this is not just the stewardship of God's money. It's the stewardship of God's time. What are you going to do with the 24 hours he just gave you? He woke you up this morning to finish the work. He didn't wake you up this morning to have a pity party. He didn't wake you up this morning to be sad and, and mad. And he didn't. He woke you up to, have, to, to finish the work. Whatever that work is, whatever that position of purpose is, I'm a parent. Finish the work. I'm a child. Finish the work. I'm a teacher. Finish the work. I'm a fireman. Finish the work. And apply these principles to your finances because we still have to live in this world. We still do. And God didn't want us suffering. He didn't want us looking bad because we represent him. We, are, we call ourselves children of a God, children of a king. Hallelujah. Well, I've never seen a broke prince. King Harry left the monarchy and he still ain't broke. So God is teaching us how to live inside of a monarchy before we get there. And we're supposed to be examples, the possibilities, how he can use his people, willing and vessels, willing and able vessels of God. So are you being used today by God or are you being used today by pity or are you being used today by anger or are you being used today by self-consciousness? We, we have to ask, who is who am I being used by today? <laughs> Hallelujah. But listen. Then it went on to say, and I'm still talking about Matthew, if you want to write this down, 25, 14, uh, one, five bags of gold, two bags of gold. But then one who received one bag of gold, he went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. That's not a good steward. So, so God gave us three people and an example inside of this parable. Two of them did right and one of them did in error, thinking he was doing right. This, when we think we're doing right, we're following the ways of the world. Now I'm going to go to Colossians. We're supposed to went there anyway. And I told you, don't get caught up in what the world tells you to do. Colossians 2 and 8. Watch this. Colossians 2 and 8. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Let me read that again. Colossians 2 and 8. If you don't know where it's at, it's in the New Testament right after Philippians. He went to Philippi. Then he went to Colossus, talking about Paul. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow, that means nothing, empty, deceptive, those are lies, philosophy, which depends on human tradition. So the, the, these, these nothing and deceptive lies depend on human tradition in the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. This is the reason why I don't follow CNBC. This is the reason why I don't follow Bloomberg. This is the reason why, and, and I, I use them for information to find out what's going on and what the enemy might be doing and what the enemy might be thinking. Because why? Because the Bible teaches me to be as wise as a serpent, but as harmless as a dove. But before I execute a trade, I look for seven key indicators that God revealed. How do I know to have seven? Well, God says you need to have seven or eight different streams of income. Seven or eight different streams of income. Ecclesiastics. Go there. Everything we give you is biblically based. In the book of Ecclesiastics, 11 verses 1 through 2. Ship your grain across the sea. Your grain can mean food because back then that was their value. That was their money. After many days, you may receive a return. Everything you got out there is at risk. Even God says that if you may see a return, ship your grain across the sea in many days, you may receive a return. Verse two, I'm in Ecclesiastes 11, one and two. You want to read 11, one through six, invest in seven ventures. That's what I'm reading out of the NIV version. I didn't make this up. You want to see? 
Can, can you see it? Let me see right there. See that? Invest in seven ventures, even in eight. And I said, well, why do we need to invest in seven or eight ventures? Because God says, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So let's ask the question. Let's bring it up to our dispensation. If you lose your primary income, what you going to do? Mm -hmm. What well, happened with COVID? Because a lot of us lost our primary income. We got, we got satisfied. We got good and, and taking a stimulus check. But if you lose your primary income, what you going to do? Huh? What happens then? Well, if you have seven or eight streams of income, then you have an option. You have a choice. Here's what I'm going to do now. Here's what I'm going to do now because of what just happened. This is why I tell you, get up, get out and be ready. This is why God tells you to stay ready, to keep from getting ready. This is why you have to have new, listen, you have to have new bottles. See my new cup? This is my Eagle's cup. That's new. This is an old cup. So if I get something new to drink, I'm not putting it in an old cup. I need to put it in a new cup. So this is why God is repositioning a lot of us financially. He's repositioning us. I tell you, every one of you guys, open up a brokerage account because that's your new cup. You're about to get an increase. That's your new cup. And the type of increase you're about to get, Wells Fargo can't handle. The type of increase you're about to get, Bank of America can't handle. There's a new cup. So everybody needs to have a brokerage account and a full service brokerage account. That costs anything to open up. Look at God. You open up a checking account, you got to put some money in it. You open up a savings account in a regular bank, traditional bank. You got to put money in it. We're breaking away from tradition. Stop listening to the world. Colossians 2 and 8. Open up a brokerage account. Full service brokerage account. Doesn't cost you anything to maintain it. Just open it up. E-Trade. That's the one we recommend. I'll put a link down below. You can follow. You can join. But E-Trade, Charles Schwab, full service. Robinhood, full service. Interactive Brokers, full service. TD Ameritrade, full service. All of these are full service brokerage accounts. Robin, we want you to open up a full service brokerage account. Whether you're a self investing member, whether you're a learn as you earn member, whether you're an active investing member, open up a full service brokerage account. We train you on how to navigate through that, that area, that space, once you open it up. It's the same thing we do every day. This is Opening Bell. This is a morning podcast that we do to help you establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family financial future. Here's what we teach. Christian financial wellness. What is that? Exercising our money. This is where we teach it. This is where you learn from it. You can go back and watch the videos every day that God wakes me up. I got to finish the work. Every day that God wakes you up, you got to finish the work. You have to be able to do what thus saith the Lord concerning the what? The, the, the principal finances of your family. I, I'm not your pastor. That ain't my job. My job is to teach you what to do with this money. Hallelujah. Glory be unto your name. How to take your disposable income, turn your pennies, physical pennies, into investable dollars. And, and, and this stuff is being revealed to us by God. Hallelujah. Guys, if you're just now joining us, I'm Harold Dillon Jr., the internet guy from Investment Group Partners. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, guys, we are the Parent Association for Community Investment Club. If you're watching me live right now, right now, you're already a member of the club. That means you're inside of our community. This is a private community designed and built the demographics of this community retail investors that's what we are we're retail investors investment group partners is the parent association that means we're overseeing so we we write the guidelines the rules regulations with a parent association same way if you're a parent you oversee the child we pay for all this and glory be unto your name, our job is to teach you how to establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future so that you can have more money than month so that you can have a future for your family. I'm asking you right now, can you put your hand on $10,000 if you had to? Okay, I'll cut it in half. Can you put your hands on $5,000 if you had to? Right now, with is my hat straight? 24 hours. Okay, I'll cut that in half. They did a survey, uh, Black Enterprise, and it said that the average black American, and I'm not being prejudiced, so white folks don't get mad at me, but the average black American can't put their hands on $2,500. In 24 hours. So, my goal, and I, I, I take baby steps. The Lord told me, keep it simple. We use the kiss rule, but his kiss is keep it simple, saints. We're going to show you how to turn your pennies into $2,500. So, at least we know you got your hands on that. Because let me tell you, when I ask God, why such little baby steps? 
He said, because $2,500 can get you in a place. $2,500 can get you out of a place. $2,500 can get you out of trouble. $2,500 can move you, buy you, drive you. I said, okay, okay, all right. So I got that. So we want to get you from one place to another. So step one in getting started, find you some disposable income. That's step one. Step one in getting started, because I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know where your finances are, but find you some disposable income. Let me tell you my story. Mine is no more Starbucks. Now, my wife bought me a Starbucks card for the holidays, and I used it all up. But I used to drink Starbucks every day, all day, without fail, no exceptions. $8 a day. I'm at work. I sold cars. and That's $56 a week disposable income. That's $224 a month disposable income. No more Starbucks. Also, if I go to the store and I happen to spend change, I happen to spend dollars, real dollars, not just my debit card or my, my credit card, but real change. I come home and I bring all my change and I put it in this bank. It takes about 30 days for me to fill this bank up. But when I go to Coinstar, which I'm invested in, I'm going to teach you about that later. I go to Coinstar inside the Albersons, which we're invested in. I'll teach you that later. I, I turn into pennies into dollars. It usually it's about 100 bucks, so that's about 25 bucks a week. So we're looking at $56 to buy no more Starbucks, my disposable income. Another $25 a week from saving change. So 56 and 25, $61. So now I got $61 of disposable income. Once you find that disposable income, you have to determine how much of that $61 a week that's disposable, which means I would never see it again, do I want to invest and how often. Okay, so that, that's step three. Well, step one is join the club. You might be already a member of the club. Welcome to the neighborhood. Step two, find me some disposable income. How much, is, find me some disposable income. If you drink beer, stop drinking so much. If you smoke cigarettes, stop smoking so much. Find you some disposable income. Step three is how much of that disposable income I found in step two do I want to spend and how often? Well, my $61, I'm going to do it every week. Every week, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to invest it into the market and watch a return. $61 a week. Because even if you did nothing else, and I want to give you guys simplicity. Keep it simple, saints. Simplicity, because I want to get you started. We go 61 times 12. I'm on my calculator. I'm on my computer. Waiting for it to come up. It's $732. $732 a year. Well, set a goal for yourself. I'm 55. So let's say my goal is that I'm going to do this until I'm 60. So 732, we're going to times that by five. I got a five-year goal. That's a midterm goal. Five years. You, you spend more time than that paying for the car you're in right now. So if I times that by five, that gives me $3,660 in a five-year term. I've already saved it. Now, I've got more then what we're trying to get you to, and it took me five years to get there, but I got saved up $3,660 off of what? $61 a week. Now, if it's invested in the market, our average return, listen to me, we manage seven neighborhood group portfolios, seven different portfolios. If you want to get more information on that, text me your full name and email address, 702-901-9128. We'll send it out to you. But that's just our average return based on, based on our averages, based on last year, Four quarters is 225% per quarter per return. So let's do this first. I'm going to break it down. I want to keep it simple. So 225. So we're going to go times. Hold on. Hold on. Um, 36.60. I'm going to reset this. I want to, I want to do this right. Hold on, we're going to clear it out. So 3660, y'all remember that number? Here we go. All right, so 3660, we're going to divide that by four because there's four quarters in a year. That means I'm making 950, I'm saving $915 per quarter. Y'all follow me? So then we want to times that 915 by our average return is 225%. That gives us 2000 $58 increase. That include the principal. The principal is nine fifteen. So y'all follow me so far. So we're gonna go two thousand fifty eight seventy five plus the nine fifteen. That gives us two thousand nine seventy three seventy five per quarter. 
So now you've got an increase in one quarter. One quarter is 90 days, just so you guys know. This is all off of $61 a week. No more Starbucks, saving my change, disposable income. Then you times that back by four, because there's four quarters in a year. At the end of the year, I'm at 11895 Nice used car. I used to sell them, so I know. 11895 Nice used car. Nice savings. So now when I ask the question, can you put your hand on $10,000 of short can? I got it in the market. So when God gives us a platform, he gives us a reason to be in that area. He's teaching us about generational wealth. He does not reveal a scripture to us that we can't utilize in our daily lives. Nothing. It's just that everybody will not take what God has given and run with it. Not everybody's going to hear. Not everybody's going to receive. Not everybody's going to do. You're just not. Hey guys, you just now joined us. Harold Elm Jr., Internet Guy from Investment Group Partners. This is Opening Bell. Hey, this is January the 23rd. We're talking about Christian financial wellness. It is Motivational Monday morning. Get up, get out, and be ready. Hallelujah. Uh, a couple things we want to talk about before the markets open. It's at 628. Markets open up in two minutes, so you know I got to be quick. Hallelujah. Um, the markets are going to open up today. The futures say they're going to open up. We're expecting the day to be a huge day today, so I need y'all all to be ready. This was... Um, a more detailed lesson concerning stewardship more so than it was about the stocks themselves. Um, God's going to take care of us, so I'm not even concerned about that. But the ones that we're going to be looking at today, guys, I gave you a list. Let me give them again. LYT, um, LYT, uh, GNS, STBX, that is not Starbucks, STBX, Solomon, Timothy, Bartholomew, X-Ray, WISA, W-I-S-A, W-I-S-A, Jay-Z, not the, not the rapper, but the stock is a Chinese meme stock, J and the letter Z as Jesus and Zachariah, and then C-L-E-U, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, the number of man, that is C-L-E-U, C-L-E-U, these are the ones, the market is about to open, I hear the bells going off, it's 6.30 on the uh, West Coast, 9.30 on the East Coast, I mean, 930 on, yeah, on the East Coast. So good morning. The market's open. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'll talk to you later on for the afternoon updates.